This is part three of a series of videos on astronomy versus astrology. And in this section, we're going to talk about seasons and timekeeping. So first of all, let's talk about what causes seasons. This is something that a lot of people have misconceptions about. So let's get into it. And it's really about how much energy the sun is delivering, how that is delivered to the earth. Uh, it's about the angle at which the sun's rays come in. This also explains why on average it gets cooler as you get to higher latitudes away from the equator, and also why it's cooler in the morning and evening and hottest in the middle of the day, kind of. Uh, the atmosphere kind of messes things up a little bit, but it's basically that's the idea. So here what you can see is I've got a square region and the sunlight is coming down and let's call this one meter square. So it's one meter square right here. But depending on what angle it comes in at, that's going to determine how big this area is that it hits the ground. And so the same amount of light is coming through, but if it is coming from a steep angle close to perpendicular to the ground, so the sun directly overhead, then you would get something that's close to exactly one meter squared. But as you dip down to more and more shallow angles, so the sun is low in the sky, then it's spreading that energy out. The, the square that hits the ground is now much, much bigger than simple, uh, the one meter squared. Same amount of energy, but it's spread out more. So it's just not so efficient. You can kind of see that here. So here in June, we've got the sun is uh, at the middle of the day is much higher. And so um, we're getting much more concentrated energy. But even in the middle of the day in December, the sunlight is coming in as a much, much steeper angle. Now, think about a laser pointer. If you have a laser pointer and you point it so that it is perpendicular to the screen, then you'll get a nice round spot. But if you hold a laser pointer off at an angle and you're kind of making it so it's a glancing blow of the laser onto the screen, you'll get an elongated red spot or green spot, depending on your laser. And so what that shows you is the same effect, that you're spreading out the light over a bigger area. But that means that the same energy is spread out over a bigger area. It's not so efficient for heating. So here what we can see is how this works for the Earth going around the sun. So the Earth orbits the sun, but its orbital axis is at an angle to the direction to the sun. And so what you have, if we start at this point here, is in this case, the North Pole is leaning towards the sun, the South Pole is leaning away. And so what we get is that the sun is higher in the sky in the North than it is in the South. And so we get more efficient energy delivery. And so it's warmer in the North than in the South. It will be summer in the North and winter in the South. But the direction of this axis stays the same. So as the Earth orbits, three months later, we get to here. And now the North and uh, South Poles are both at the same distance, at the same um, tilt towards the sun. Neither is tilted towards the sun at all. And so now you're not getting more energy in either direction or more efficient delivery of energy. But the Earth's going to keep moving. And so when we get to here, now what we have is the North Pole is leaning away. The South Pole is leaning too. And so now the South will have the sun more directly overhead. And so it will be in summertime and the North will be in wintertime. And again, it keeps moving. And so we get back to here. And this would be spring when neither the North nor South Pole is leaning towards the sun. So this is kind of showing that same idea. Uh, but in motion. So here, the north was pointing away. That will be winter in the north. That would have been spring. That's summer. And then we're coming back around to autumn. So as it goes around, the axis stays in the same direction. So at this point, the north pole is pointing away. The south pole is point pointing slightly towards. And so the sun will be more overhead in the south than in the north. But let's watch it go around again. And we find that when it gets to here, we have neither pole is, is pointing towards. Now the north is pointing towards. The north is moving away and south moving towards until the south is more towards. So what I'm going to show you is um, here's the earth, here's the sun. As the earth goes around, we're going to watch what happens to the inclination angle of the sun. Here I've got it set up for my current latitude, which is 29 degrees north. And so this is the angle of sunlight at noon in January. Uh, here you can see where the Earth is. 
the South Pole is pointing more towards the, uh, the North Pole uh, with respect to the sun. And here we've got the perspective of what you're seeing as this is where, uh, where the light's coming in. So it's basically the same as this inclination, but now it's from the point of view of all different latitudes. So let's watch what happens when we switch this on. So the Earth is moving, and what we can see is that the inclination of the sun at noon is going up and up and up. And you can see that from the point of view of the direction to the sun, the Earth seems to be moving its axis of rotation towards the sun. And so here we can see that as we get to June, we're getting to the point where the sun is almost directly overhead. But once we get to June, we start to move back the other way. And so now we're going to see that the sun at, at noon is going to get lower and lower. We're going to see that the, um, the North Pole appears to be moving away from the direction towards the sun and the South Pole is moving towards. And so we're really seeing the effect of that tilt of our rotation axis. Now, just for fun, I'm going to put in a different latitude so you can see what difference it makes. I'm going to put in the latitude where I was born. So now it's going around and you can see it was much, much steeper angle, much, much shallower angle, sorry. Um, but you can see again, it's getting higher and higher until we get, and you can see here, um, this is just gonna do exactly the same thing, but we can see that as it goes around, it's going to go and you can see it doesn't get to directly overhead. So we're in June, and it's much, much higher in the sky, much more straight down, but not as straight as it was in San Antonio, which explains why England is much colder than Texas. The last thing that I want to show with respect to seasons is this, which shows us basically um, how the uh, amount of sunlight changes during a year. So here you can see, um, you know, here's the, here's the whole globe. And this is showing you how much you're getting in terms of sunlight over the course of a, a year. And so you can see that as the Earth goes around the sun, you're getting different parts of the planet getting uh, different amounts of illumination. Um, this is actually total sunlight. If we do this for solar intensity, it looks a little different. Um, my favorite is to do daylight hours because now you can really see that up here, it, you've got sunlight um, in the North Pole, but it's gonna disappear. And now you've got nothing at North Pole and now you've got sunlight in the South Pole. So you can really see how the effect of this tilt is affecting the amount of daylight that you get. And that's going to affect what, uh, what it's like seasonally. So now I want to talk about timekeeping uh, because we've always told the time by thinking about where the sun is in the sky or where the stars are in the sky. And so I want to get into this a little bit. So first, I'm going to introduce the idea of sidereal and solar days. Um, a sidereal day is the length of time it takes the Earth to complete one rotation, that is to go round once, 360 degrees. So what's a solar day? A solar day is 24 hours, and it is not the same as a sidereal day. A solar day, though, is defined by the time it takes for the sun to get from, or as high as it gets in the sky, but the highest point in the sky in the Northern Hemisphere is always going to be due south, and that happens once a day. The time it takes to get to the next one, that is by definition a solar day in 24 hours. Why are these different? Well, it's because the Earth is moving. So here what I've got is, here's the Earth, and if you're at point A and it's noon and the Earth is going to rotate once on its axis, when it's rotated once, the sun is not going to be back in exactly the same position. So you have to actually go through more than one rotation to get back to the same position. You have to go through about 361 degrees. And so a sidereal day, the time it takes the Earth to spin on its axis once is about four minutes shorter than what we think of as a day. A solar day is what we think of as a day. And just to show this as an animation, what you can see here is we've got the Earth, we've got someone standing on the Earth, it's noon, the sun would be directly overhead. But as this moves around, what we're going to find is that over the course of a day, we're going to move through one complete revolution. 
So this is a little slow, but you can see the earth is turning and you know, now it's midnight and it's continuing background and the sun is rising right about now. Um, but when it gets back to one full rotation, which is right there, the sun is not directly overhead. It has to move through just a tiny bit more in order to get back to directly overhead. So what we think of as a day is not actually the time it takes the earth to turn once, it's the time it takes the sun to get back to the same position in the sky. Now, there's another thing that we want to talk about, which is different types of years. So a tropical year is the time between two spring equinoxes. Remember, we talked about how as we go around the sun, we have an equinox when the north and south poles, neither one is leaning towards the sun, we get the equinoxes. Spring is when it's heading into summer, autumn is when it's heading into winter. So the time between spring equinoxes is a tropical year. And it's a little under 365 and a quarter days. A sidereal year is what most people think of as a year, which is the time it takes the earth to go round once. So the earth is going from all the way around the sun doing 360 degrees just once. And it's slightly longer. It's actually just over 365 and a quarter days. The difference is only 20 minutes, but those 20 minutes are gonna add up. And so they're gonna cause some problems. And so we're gonna look at those shortly. But why is there a difference? If the earth is just going from spring equinox to spring equinox, surely that should take the same time as it does for the earth to go around, but it doesn't. And to understand that, we have to get into uh, an idea called precession. So here I've got the earth and we've got its equator and its North Pole. So it's, it's tilted with respect to the sun. So uh, horizontal here would be the plane uh, that the sun is in and the equator is at 23 and a half degrees. And what's happening is that the earth is spinning around. So as well as spinning on its axis about this axis here, it's also doing this slow, very, very slow spin, like a spinning top. And that's kind of what this is showing here, okay? So what you have is that the direction of the axis is changing ever so slowly. So it stays at 23 and a half degrees, but it's spinning around. So this is gonna show you uh, another version of this. So basically what's happening is it stays at 23 and a half degrees, but as it goes around and around and around, it's actually spinning around like this, but it takes 26,000 years for it to do one full revolution around this precession motion. So here this is showing it again. And what it means is that, well, right now, when we look to the North Pole, above the North Pole, if you're standing at the North Pole at your zenith, you would find the pole star or Polaris it's actually gonna change over time. And so what this is showing you is that drawn out. We've got all of these different stars um, that you can see. So right now, this is the pole star. This is basically where it is right now. But over the course of 26,000 years, it will go through all of these different positions in the sky. So sometimes there won't be a star there. So this precession is important because what happens is that um, it's because it's moving around, in the time it takes for the Earth to go around the sun, the direction of the axis has changed just a little bit. So we actually get back to an equinox 20 minutes before we've done a full circuit. You can think of it as being, I'm, I'm going around, I'm going around, but I'm also spinning just a little bit. And because I'm spinning, I'm gonna get back to having the direction where neither the North nor South Pole is any closer to the sun, then that's gonna happen just a little bit before we've done one full orbit. And so what you're seeing is the effect of that built up over time. So a tropical year is 20 minutes shorter than a sidereal year, which is what we think of as a year. Now, 20 minutes is not much, and for one year, it's not going to make much difference. But over the course of centuries or millennia, those 20 minutes are going to add up and it's going to start to change the position of things relative to the calendar that we normally think of.